Hello everyone, welcome back to Radiology Math Easy, your all-time favorite YouTube channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to Radiology Math DC series. Today our topic is inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is also a common disease in the current world. Actually, it's a widespread GI tract inflammation. It has two types, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. In Crohn's disease, just involvement is whole GI tract and uh, just regional enteritis. In ulcerative colitis, uh, there's common involvement in the colon and sometimes terminal ileum. It is called backwash ileitis and rectum. And uh, these diseases are common between 15 to 40 years of age. There's involvement in the gastrointestinal system and also there are extraintestinal manifestations. The extraintestinal manifestations are the common ones, goldstone formation, there's uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis, cirrhosis and also cholangiocarcinoma and hepatocytocarcinoma can also occur. Another one is uh, hepatic abscess formation. And there's uh, MSK or musculoskeletal system involvement. There's zero negative spondyle arthropathies and also sacroiliitis. So axial skeleton can get involved. And also skin manifestations such as atrium one or dosum can also occur. Another one is renal calculi. Uh, another thing is we have to differentiate between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. In Crohn's disease, there is common involvement in the terminal ileum. Actually, it can involve any part of the GI tract. In ulcerative colitis, rectum and colon can get involved. Rectum is the commonest site. There are transmurous depletions in Crohn disease. It is radiologically important to identify. And also in ulcerative colitis, in contrast to that, there are continuous lesions and there are superficial ulcer formation or mucosal lesions. And other complicating features in Crohn's disease is perianal fistula, perianal abscess formation. But in ulcerative colitis, anal involvement is uncommon or rare. There is also mesenteric creeping fat. There's, that means there is migration of or extension of mesenteric fat around the bowel wall. So it is not seen in ulcerative colitis. Those are radiologically important features to differentiate Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Now let's look at the imaging features. First, let's look at the x-rays. So this is the frontal radiograph of the abdomen in a skeletal immature patient. There you can see dilatation of the transverse colon here and also the ascending colon and there's thickening of the bowel wall you can see bowel wall thickening due to colitis so it's a complication of ulcerative colitis toxic megacolon you can see and wall thickening so it's a it has poor prognosis in ulcerative colitis however there's no free air within the peritoneum so no report of venous gas also and the next x-ray is another thing x-ray of uh, inflammatory bowel disease you can see continuous involvement of the descending colon and transverse colon and there's uh, a hostal pattern you don't see hostra in the bowel and narrowed bowel lumen is seen so it is a complication of ulcerative colitis in this case giving rise to lead pipe appearance so it's a narrowing of the bowel lumen with wall thickening another abdominal x-ray you can see you can see thumbprint appearance you can see thickening of the hostra hostra thickening and giving rise to thumbprint appearance it's also indication of wall thickening in the bowel this is transverse colon giving rise to thumbprint appearance it's another x-ray it's a anthroposophic radiograph to of the SI joint, both SI joint in skate and mature patient, you can see the sclerosis of the SI joint and ankylosis fusion of the SI joint. You can see that's mainly in the right SI joint involvement, and subtle sclerosis is seen in the left SI joint also. This is sacroiliitis, it is seen in inflammatory bowel disease. It's a 
extra intestinal manifestation this is a lower gi contrast study and barium study actually so you can see thumb print appearance so this is due to thickening of the hostra you can see thumb print appearance so multiple thumb print appearance as see this stricture is probably due to peristalsis so this so yeah, kind of a bowel thickening you can see so another one here you can see irregular outline in this case you can see irregular outline of the bowel wall so it's due to ulceration and uh, there are multiple uh, polyps you can see filling defects are due to polyps you can see multiple filling defects here yeah, these are due to pseudo polyp formation in the normal mucosa you can see multiple polyps and ulcerations so this seen in this is an example for ulcerative colitis filling defects and shaggy outline so another lower gi contrast study you can see a hostile bowel pattern here in the descending colon transverse colons here so it's led by appearance and also thumb print appearance also they are due to thickening of the hostras so it's another example for ulcerative colitis and also here yeah, the ulceration also there irregularity seen in the bowel wall now let's look at the ct images you can see the is the contrast ct coronal reformatted image you can see thickening of the bowel wall you can see here yeah. bowel wall thickening is there and also you can see venous congestion giving rise to com sign it's another it's a indicate it's an example for crohn's disease bowel wall thickening and um, prominent mesenteric veins so it's due to venous congestion and inflammation it's an example for ulcerative colitis here this is the ileal loops which are thicken and venous congestion you can see due to inflammation it's another example you can see ct com sign this is here again there's bowel wall thickening and narrowing of the bowel wall is also their stricture formation and you can see venous congestion prominent veins you can see in the mesentery it's another example for crohn's disease now let's look at the mr enterography here you can see a contrast image coronal image of the uh, mri section of the bowel in the enterography you can see thickening of the jejunal loops here thickening of the jejunal loops and also enhancement you can see some venous congestion also there so there's wall enhancement wall thickening and venous congestion in the jejunal proximal jejun it's another example for crohn's disease it's another enterography you can see it's a non contrast image you can see wall thickening in the jejunum so it's another example for crohn's disease there are kind of skip lesions you can here also you can see wall thickening so it's a skip lesions you can see by bowel loop so also dilated So now the example here the terminal ileal involvement stricture formation in Crohn's disease so bowel wall thickening is there some kind of fat stranding you can see so it's another enterography image uh, showing the terminal ileal involvement in Crohn's disease so that concludes inflammatory bowel disease so please subscribe our youtube channel then you will get notifications of our new videos and also you can comment on our videos Thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this.